All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am the myth, the legend, Chris, the sauce man, Saliba, and today we are grilling up something extra special for you. It is a 23 pound triple A grade brisket. This is by far the biggest slab of meat I have ever tried to cook. And I had to do it for the channel. When I saw it at the grocery store, I wasn't letting anybody else grab this bad boy. It's all for us. I hope you're ready for this one. It's a special one. This thing is going to be on the grill for the next like 24 hours. It is roughly 7.48 p.m. and we are getting that pellet grill fired up and ready to go. This thing's gonna be going all night long at 200 degrees. If y'all are ready to watch, I'm the man to do it for you. Let's grill. So for today's rub, we're actually gonna be coming up with our own mixture today, which is something we don't always do. I usually like to buy a lot of pre-made stuff, it just makes my life a little bit easier. What I suggest is if anybody has any leftover shaker bottles and stuff, you always use them because they just make life easy. So always keep them around and use them when you can. So our first ingredient is gonna be one big heaping tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt. So when I mean heaping, I mean we're just making a rub here, so I mean heaping. So we're just gonna put that right in our container and put our salt over to the side. We are using one quarter cup of granulated garlic here with our no-name garlic powder, not granulated, we're actually using powder today. This right here is actually a porterhouse steak uh, rub that I purchased, actually I should say my wife brought home from the local bulk barn here as that's where she works here in Oshawa. So we're going to be using it. It's very pepper heavy. It smells absolutely wonderful and hopefully it's going to be a reuse on the channel here. So we have a third of a cup of that going in. I need to purchase a funnel. Absolutely need to purchase a funnel. I'm going to go off camera and pour it in over the sink as to not make a huge mess. And the next thing we are going to add is three teaspoons, maybe four teaspoons of our garlic powder here. One, two, three, and four teaspoons of our onion powder. And what we have here is actually what's left over of our California garlic with herbs and jalapenos. So in this uh, seasoning, it actually already has garlic, salt, sugar, dried peppers, uh, some dried mixed vegetables like carrots, potatoes, onions, leeks, and some celery and a bit of cabbage. So it just adds like a little bit more complex flavor to it. And because it's got that garlic and the jalapenos, it adds just a little bit of spice to it. And since we're using our recycled shaker container here, we can just go ahead, get all of those ingredients mixed up. So now that you've got your seasoning mix all ready to go, you just want to get on there and just start covering that meat so that we can build up a nice crust of seasoning all over this bad boy. So this is usually where I try not to make an absolute mess in the kitchen, but with this thing being a 23 pound brisket, I actually have no idea how I could accomplish this without making an absolute mess. So we're gonna get this all nice and seasoned. We will be smoking this thing, what well, this thing, this nice monstrous brisket with the fat up because it is going to be such a long overnight and almost hopefully about a 20 hour. I don't have 24 hours now, now that we're getting this thing on a little bit later at night. We just don't have that 24 hours to be able to cook with. Now, I didn't, uh, I didn't worry about washing my hands or anything and touching this container as I will be just throwing this spice container out when I am finished. So you want to make sure you get a nice 
healthy coating of this seasoning everywhere you can so that we can build up a nice beautiful bark. I did do some trimming so that we didn't have too much of that fat where we don't want it. There are some spots where you just don't want to be tasting that really hard fat that just won't render down and turn into that butter like consistency. Man, I have to admit, it's a little intimidating trying to cook with something this big in a non-commercial kitchen just at home. I mean, it's really weird. You see this type of stuff on TV where you see guys smoking these sides of briskets. I mean, this is this is definitely something new for me. Uh, we're still, we're actually, we're just put on a little bit more of a lockdown here in Ontario and Toronto area as well. So. I don't know how many people I can have over for dinner, but I will be sharing this with a lot of my neighbors. So, you know, they have to smell this thing cooking all night long, so I might as well be nice and share it as much as I possibly can. So I think we've used up just about all of our seasoning here. As you can see, we got it nicely coated. And now we can get it out on the grill. We are now back out at our grill, back out. We're actually out at the grill for the first time during this video. I have it set to 200 degrees and that is what we are going to be smoking this beautiful brisket at all night long. This thing is just so heavy. I've never worked with anything this big before other than maybe like a 21, 22 pound turkey, but that still has the bones. This is just a monstrous slab of boneless meat. So let's get this thing on our grill and start the cooking process. What you wanna do is be careful. This is my biggest baking pan I've been using to carry it around. And it's, it's not even close to big enough for this bad boy. So I will be smoking it with our tip, the thickest part out over on our right hand side of the grill because that is my hottest side of the grill. And like I said, we will be smoking this with our fat side up to ensure that we stay nice and juicy and build a beautiful, nice bark on this. As you can see, we're on our grill. We're gonna close that lid, and I'm actually gonna go have my first uh, fire in my outdoor fireplace of the fall season here in Southern Ontario. And I think it's actually only our second one in our new home. So we're gonna close the lid and come back and check on this thing before bedtime. So we are sitting at 12.30 p.m. and right before I go to bed I thought I would give it a little check in as well as check the pellet uh, level on our hopper. Meat is looking pretty good as you can see. We are sitting at the four hour mark on our cook so we have a long 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 time to go but we're starting to see some of the liquid. Uh, seat from the meat so that's always a good sign that means things are well on their way <clears throat> let's close that lid up keep that heat in and let's do a hopper check as you can see we've lost a little bit of uh, pellets in the hopper but we got a long way to go still I think we're more than enough to keep going for the night so this is gonna be me signing off heading to, headed to bed uh, we'll check it back in around 8 a.m. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Brisket Watch 2020. It is now 8.30 a.m. and we are reaching the eight hour point since we checked on it last at 12.30 and we are at the 12 hour cooking point. So let's go ahead, lift the top and check this bad boy out. My oh my, does this ever look delicious. So we are actually going to take our meat probe and insert it in and see where our current temperature is sitting. Wow, that was that was like butter. So we should be reaching close to the point where we're going to be able to pull this off and wrap it and stick it back on to cook for the rest of the day. But man, it just smells absolutely wonderful out here all night long. I guess I have to share some of this with the neighbors. 
it's still climbing. We've reached 142. We've hit the 145 point. This is actually cooking a little bit quicker than I thought it would be. So we're going to be able to pull this off now. Get it on to just get it nice and wrapped. Yeah, we're at 155, 156. So we're going to be able to get this wrapped up and let it slowly cook for the rest of the day. So now that we've got our meat back inside, we want to get this thing lifted up and off and on to our foil. Unfortunately, I didn't pick up any butcher's paper, which I really wanted to do to cook this, but uh, I just didn't get time to get out and get that paper. So, we want to get this nice, nicely wrapped up tight, and then get it back on the grill before we lose too much temperature. And with that foil on there, it's going to seal in all those juices and make sure that we don't lose any of the moisture while it does the rest of it. it's cooking. So as you can see, we're getting it wrapped up nice and tight. And then we'll be good to put it back on the grill. Now that we are back out at our grill, we've got our brisket wrapped and we're ready to put it back on. So let's get that done. Nice and smoky. And here we go. Now we're back on there to cook for many, many, many more hours. So we get that meat nice and soft like butter. Hopefully you guys can see. I'm going to tilt over to the hopper and just show how much pellets we've actually gone through so far. As you can see, we've gone through about half of the hopper and we are at the 12, 12 and a half hour mark of cooking. So that's pretty good. We might actually be able to do this with just under a full hopper for this entire cook. All right, everybody, see you back in a few hours. So it's about 2.45 in the afternoon and we are complete. I have checked our probe. We've reached our nice internal temperature of everywhere between 195 and 200 degrees. And that probe is going in just like butter. So now it is time to remove our brisket, place it in our cooler wrapped in these towels for extra insulation and let it sit for a couple of hours to rest. Oh, that's not even, that's so butter. Oh. I'm going to have to try that again with some spatulas. I'll be back and let's take two on that. So let's try that again as our first attempt was an epic fail and we ended up spilling our brisket juices everywhere. See if we can get it in the bag that I put in here so that we don't leak too much juices everywhere. Ooh, that's hot. I think we're successful. Everything is in the bag there. We're cramming it right down into our cooler and we're just wrapping with that towel for extra insulation. And then we're gonna seal the lid and let it sit for a couple of hours and then we're going to slice it up for dinner oh man that smells good i can't wait to slice that up and eat it welcome back everybody it is now 5 30 so our brisket has been sitting for roughly three hours now and we are ready to get this bad boy sliced. So let's pull it out of the cooler and let's start getting ready to slice this bad boy up. What we'll do is we'll get it out, 
We'll get it all laid out nicely on the cutting board and then we will switch over to a nice close up view when we are ready to slice. Whoo, this smells good. Oh, it is still steaming and mighty, mighty, mighty warm in here. All right, let's see if we can get it out. What I did is because we were leaking everywhere as I did that was really really hot don't do that on film because that's kind of embarrassing all right I give up at least we know it's juicy <laughs> all right let's just peel that bad boy open well, I'm going to say that it held temperature quite well. All right, we are nice and close in. We are still steaming and this looks amazing. I am going to use my barbecue. Ooh! Oh wow, I don't think I've ever had a brisket pull apart like that before. That is just super, super, super soft. So let's see if we can do this here. I think this is actually going to be my tenderest brisket I have ever done before. All right. Well, I'm going to pause this and we're going to come back to a zoomed in picture and just start slicing. Here we are and who's ready for some slicing action. So let's just start by getting one of these end pieces. I'm telling you guys, it is legitimately falling apart it is so tender i don't think i've ever cooked a brisket like this where i've smoked it and it's basically almost turning into pulled beef this is insane let's pull one out and let's see if it even stays together it's so tender look at that that is just amazing nice little smoke ring there and that meat fiber is just pulling together. Camera lady, would you like to try a piece? Let's see what you think. I'm gonna try one. I can't wait. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. That is the best brisket I have ever cooked. This is just absolutely amazing. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I have to say, Winner, winner, brisket dinner. I don't care how big of a nerd I am for that one, but I'm still using it. This was a triple A grade, $92, 23-pound brisket that I started cooking last night at 8.30, and we are now enjoying for dinner tonight at 5.30. Hope everybody liked this one. Make sure you smash that like button. And subscribe to the channel as we're going to be doing more cooking fun all winter long. We are going to be using that pellet grill all winter long. I promise everybody. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week. Peace.